Hello everybody that is listening to this message. I would love to talk to you about our faith. I divided this topic into four sections. The first check section is um, <clears throat> about the story of Caleb and Joshua in Numbers 13 and 14. It would be useful if you would read that um, in advance or afterwards and perhaps uh, watch this message again. And also uh, 1 Corinthians, let me look that up, 10, 1 to 11 and uh, Hebrews chapter 3 and chapter 4. Because uh, those uh, scriptures um, are about this topic. The first uh, section is the spirit of Caleb and Joshua. Second section is uh, how uh, let's try some steps of faith. The third section is about uh, how to overcome uh, doubt and unbelief. And the final section is how to exercise the faith. And I, right from the beginning, I would like to admit that I consider myself not uh, um, not having more knowledge about that or more experience about that than actually you. But I would love to uh, take you with me on a journey t to learn that. I think in the future when these challenges that are written in, for example, Matthew 24, uh, the end times challenges, when they come, we as Christians, I speak of the, the average Christian, should be more equipped how to exercise our faith. So let me start with this uh, topic. In uh, Numbers, 13 and 14, we read about a very interesting story uh, where God uh, wants to uh, prepare the people of Israel to enter into the promised land of Canaan after two years, only two years of wandering through the desert uh, from Egypt. And uh, now God says to Moses uh, that they should uh, pick uh, of each tribe one ruler and so let 12 uh, people, 12 of the rulers of Israel, uh, enter into the land of Canaan secretly and spy it out. So that's the normal uh, behavior when you want to conquer a land which uh, God is about to do with them, you first of all ha have to know something about your enemy. And so they uh, wander 40 days through this land. And when they had come back, they uh, brought report. Uh, and they first they said, uh, yeah, it is as God told us, it is a fruitful land, it is a good land. And uh, here we have some fruits with us. They brought grapes and uh, figs and uh, pomegranate fruits with them and showed that the people, and I consider uh, they were amazed how big the fruits were. Uh, and uh, yeah, so everything looked quite good in the first place. But, and now uh, the text uh, uses a word uh, in the report of the ten uh, spies. You know, I, uh, I say by purpose ten spies and two spies because there was a difference between them. Ten spies were, as rulers normally are, good educated, good experienced and reasonable, faithful people and reliable people. And so, uh, but these 10 uh, spies 
had uh, uh, not much faith, you know. Uh, so uh, after this neutral report, they used the word in Hebrew that means uh, a limitation. Yes, the land is good, it's wonderful, we have a good fruit and it's flowing from milk and, and honey, which is an expression of prosperity. But, in German we say but, or in English you say nevertheless. And this Hebrew word has only three uh, letters. It means a limitation, you know. So, uh, but we saw giants in the land and the cities are walled and the people are stronger than we. And so, this report uh, initiated fear in the listeners, in the people. But Caleb and Joshua were different. They went, they saw the same thing in, in, uh, uh, in the land in these uh, 40 days, but they were different. They had uh, the spirit of faith inside of them. You know, uh, Caleb uh, tried to still the people and say, said, uh, um, let me look at. He said, uh, we are well able to overcome it. Let's go up at once. You know, he was uh, ready to fight for, for uh, to occupy the land. And Joshua was the same of the same spirit. So the Bible says, uh, Joshua and Caleb had another spirit than these 10 other guys, you know, but uh, it's normal that you listen to the ma majority. That is, that is just uh, a human uh, behavior. It's normal. So the people were more impressed uh, um, from the negative report of the 10 spies that were not in faith instead of Caleb and Joshua's report. And uh, so the people got panic because uh, after Joshua and Caleb uh, tried to steal the people and try to encourage them, the 10 uh, unbelieving spies repeated their statement and said, no, we are not able to overcome uh, those people. They are stronger than we. And they had a totally different self-esteem and uh, identity with them, you know. The ten uh, uh, unbelieving spies had an identity uh, like grasshoppers compared to these giants, you know. And uh, by the way, uh, the story of the giants in this uh, is not a metaphor or um, only a picture or symbolism that they were stronger, so they were really giants because uh, yeah, th that is not a fairy tale, that is uh, reality. We see that today, if you look at YouTube, and you give in, you could, could give in a Nephilim or giants uh, in the ancient Hebrew uh, world or so, they found everywhere on the earth, they found uh, uh, skeletons, giant skeletons, you know, five meters. Or, or 10 meters high uh, of height, you know. So these giants were reality. And it's quite understandable that the normal uh, person or the normal human uh, is frightened to see such uh, big uh, creatures, you know. And so um, the congregation got in total panic by this. Uh, they all knew uh, that there are giants, you know, and uh, they got in total panic and uh, to a degree that they wanted to rebel and uh, take, uh, take their own leader and go back to Egypt, you know. And uh, again, uh, last time Joshua and Caleb uh, tried to steal the people 
and warned them a last time and said, the land is exceeding good for us. We will become rich and prosperous. It's flowing from mil with milk and honey, so we will have success. And Yahweh is with us and will help us to conquer them. You know, uh, and they have no God that can stand against Yahweh. You know, don't fall into fear. But it was too late. These words that the ten unbelieving spies had spoken had already uh, poisoned their heart and had an impact uh, uh, so that these people wanted even to kill Joshua and Caleb because they were afraid of what, what, what they said, you know. And uh, so uh, God has to intervene in this uh, critical moment because the people were about to kill those people who had the Holy Spirit inside of them, you know. We see there uh, uh, this, uh, this fight between the people who were, were in the flesh. They were reasonable people. They were good educated. They were well known. They had the acknowledgement of, uh, of the people. They were proved and so. But they had not the spirit of faith. You know, they were very reasonable, but without faith. And uh, uh, Joshua and Caleb, and even Moses, but Joshua and Caleb, the Bible says, had another spirit. So those, the flesh and the, the spirit cannot go together. We see that with that example, we can really see that they cannot go together. So, uh, you know, the people in the flesh wanted to kill the people that are, were in, in the spirit. And the same is today, you know, in the church or so, when you really want to go into the, when, want to live with the spirit, even in the, in, uh, among the people of God, you got some problems. You can, you can uh, get some uh, earnest problems. So... And uh, so God has to intervene in order to save uh, uh, Joshua and Caleb. And, uh, you know, we see it with this example also uh, how, how earnest the problem of our uh, unbelief or our doubts are in the, in, the, in the face of God, you know, because God gets really angry in this moment and he says to Moses let me wipe them out I have enough of this uh, 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 unbelieving um, congregation you know and you know uh, in in the process of preparing f uh, to uh, this message I found a very interesting thing I have a Bible program as nowadays are available everywhere and uh, I gave in because I wanted to study uh, the topic of faith. So just I gave in the, the word faith and looked it up through the entire Bible. You know, it's about uh, 160 words uh, or verses where faith is used. And uh, I found a very interesting thing. You know, the word faith is only mentioned two times in the Old Testament but 158 times or about that 156 in the New Testament. So, right from this uh, 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 thing, uh, from this fact, we can uh, draw some conclusions. So we can, we can say, if you want to learn faith, don't look so much in the Old Testament, but look in the New Testament. Or when you, when you want to learn faith, you cannot ask the natural man, you know, he has no faith. He, he don't understand faith because faith is a supernatural thing. So, okay, we want to go uh, forward now. Uh, and God, uh, as I said before, God wants to wipe the whole people of Israel out, except Joshua and Caleb. And he asked for uh, uh, allowance with Mo uh, Moses, you know. It's a, also a very interesting uh, situation. Think about that. God, the Almighty God asks for uh, 
permission to kill the people and he asked a man. You know, uh, that, that shows me a, a wonderful thing. Uh, first of all, how uh, humble God is. Second, how important our uh, position as uh, interse intercessor, intercessor is uh, between God and man, you know. He asks Moses for allowance. He could have done that and say, Moses, come on, we, we want to uh, uh, establish a new uh, people. But God asks for intercession to kill them all because he's very angry. We, we should take that, uh, on one hand, we should take that very serious. You know, I often thought, I wondered about uh, that fact which I saw in the, in the New Testament, how often uh, Jesus seemed to get really angry when the people, when the, uh, the disciples didn't believe, when they didn't use faith, uh, but had uh, unbelief or uh, doubt. I, when I look into the text a little bit deeper, I find, my goodness, that, that uh, seems not to be a, a small deal, but a big deal for Jesus. And so I, I often thought, my God, you have to have understand, to understand that. You know, you are God. You, you have, perhaps you remember that you have been in heaven and with, fa with the Father and you have all this experience of uh, supernatural uh, power and so. But these are humans. They have, they don't, they only see, believe what they see. Uh, they are brought up in this uh, environment of the natural uh, laws, you know. They cannot, you cannot expect faith from them. And uh, you have to understand that. But it seems to me that God has no understanding for faith, for if we are faithless or if, if we are unbelief, uh, if we don't believe, you know. As uh, uh, Hebrews also says, Hebrews eleven six. I mean, uh, I think um, there it says, uh, without faith, you can by no means please God, you know. That's the condition. We have to have faith. So, normally we could say, okay, then <laughs> it's over. We cannot please God because we have no faith in our natural man, you know. So, but uh, there the, uh, grace comes in and uh, faith is a gift. That when you come to God and he sees in your heart, he, he gives you this faith as a gift, you know. And uh, so God forgives. Uh, Moses uh, uh, does not allow God to wipe them out. Thank God that Moses has, has been there, you know, and that his, his heart of a priest uh, really uh, was, uh, was important in this situation. Moses does not allow God to, to kill the people. Very interesting situation, you know. God is, uh, that also shows me, God is not only the Lord, you know. By the way, I can tell you, many of you uh, would know that, but everywhere where uh, the name Lord in the Old Testament is written in capitals, in big letters, uh, it's actually a wrong uh, translation. You should uh, read or uh, they should print there, I am, you know. That's not the meaning of Lord, you know. God is not always the Lord. He doesn't always give only commandments, you know, and c commands. And uh, But uh, he also want to have a relationship with you, you know. He, he also has sometimes suggestions instead of... Uh, uh, only commands, you know. So God forgives the uh, children of Israel, but he punishes them with 40 years wandering around, useless wandering around in the wilderness until they are all uh, vanished, gone. And there he says, as you have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. So we, we should ve be very uh, uh, cautious what comes out of our mouth, you know, as you have spoken with your mouth, with in mine ears, so will I do to you. Numbers fourteen twenty eight. That's even a warning to us for us today. Let's not speak failure, sickness, negative circumstances, and unbelief. Don't speak negative stuff, you know. 
Don't speak uh, sorrows, don't speak unbelief. As my mother-in-law once said, uh, if you don't have to say anything good, just shut your mouth. <laughs> it's a good advice. Okay, so only Joshua and Caleb were still alive when they finally, after 40 years, entered into the land of Canaan. So, we can learn uh, one thing of that story uh, for sure. I mean, rulers in the church should be full of the spirit of faith. You know, as even Acts uh, 6 5 recommends, or Isaiah 1 uh, 1 5. We cannot rely on natural human qualities such as intelligence, education, or assertiveness in the Church of Christ. The challenges that lay ahead of us will be exceeding human capabilities and require the spirit of faith. <laughs> so the goal of this message is that we can start to learn first what faith is, is and how it works. From this perspective, we see clearly that our words are determining uh, the course of our life. These little words of these ten uh, uh, skilled but unbelieving men turned the whole people into the wrong direction, you know, and destroyed the great chains that God had given them. Nevertheless, but the land is good and fruitful and prosperous, but nevertheless. So in Hebrew, this, as I said, is a word of limitation. Yeah, the promised land is very good, but God has promised us, even us, that we are healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ on the cross. But the doctor, my body, the mirror say something different. What can we do with that now? You know? Psalm uh, 78, uh, uh, 41 also speaks of this episode in the wilderness and explains us uh, what really happened. You know, there it says, How oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert? Yes, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They remembered not his hand nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. This, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, shows clearly that our unbelief and that we limit God with it is first of all sin. Yeah, as Romans says, Romans 14, 23, uh, everything that is not out of faith is sin. So consider that and you see how much sin is still in us uh, working. You know, everything that is not out of faith is sin. And even if we do something out of fear or a doubt or so, you know, it is sin, you know. Uh, but what I want to say is that second, first of all, it, it's sin, it limits God. And second, it provokes him to anger. So faith and relationship is one point that I want to mention also. We see in Joshua, which means Yahweh saved, that the relationship with God is necessary in order to learn to exercise the faith. The Bible says about Joshua in Exodus 33, 11, that Joshua departed not out of the tabernacle when they wandered through the wilderness, you know. He was in love with God. Joshua didn't want to leave his presence. That's why he and Caleb were full of, weren't full of fear, uh, because they were in love with God, you know. We know that that perfect love, as John says in one of his letters, perfect love casts out fear. <clears throat> So God also said to us, Hebrews 13, 5, I will never leave you nor forsake you, so that we can have uh, confidence in God, you know. 
even in our uh, f uh, present uh, or future challenges that will come uh, among this on this earth, there will come huge challenges in the future. But we, brothers and sisters, we should not uh, have fear or worries or sorries. Instead, we should learn. We should move uh, in uh, towards uh, to exercise our faith. We should learn to. Uh, to have faith for healing, for example, healing of pain, healing of uh, uh, visible things and so, visible uh, sicknesses and so. We should go in that direction because Jesus also said in, I think it's uh, John 14, 12 or so, uh, chapter uh, 14 in, uh, in the Gospel of John, he said, he who he that believes on me, the same works that I do, will he do also and even greater works. So, you know, uh, we have a promise that we can do uh, all these works and we should move in that direction. We should learn, take time to read the Bible, to study the Bible and learn to exercise faith, learn to use faith. So, one also, one thought I want to uh, uh, talk about is the identity change. It is uh, necessary for us to uh, consider who we are in Christ. Who are you, brothers and brother and sister? Are you uh, what your education certificate uh, has written on it? Are you a baker? Are you a teacher? Are you a professor? Are you a, a nurse? Are you a driver? What are you in Christ? You are something very different. You are not only a, a, a natural being, you are a supernatural being in Christ. So, all things are possible to whom that believe. Okay, so I have to go forward here a little bit, just a moment. Yeah, uh, the second point uh, was uh, try to some steps on the water. You know, one of the most effective exercises to try is to try, uh, in order to, to learn to uh, uh, use faith, is to dare to tithe your income and give it to the church or to the ministry that uh, uh, feeds you spiritually. You know, God loves to challenge us in this regard. Malachi 3.10 says that uh, uh, very clearly. But up front, I want to uh, um, assure you that we are no more under the law of Moses, you know, which this tithing thing also uh, um, is a part of the law of Moses, you know. You don't have to tithe in order to be fully accepted and blessed and loved and righteousness before God. Please don't misunderstand me. That's not the reason that I speak about that. And I don't want to uh, uh, abuse this, uh, this verse in order to make pressure. But, and this is a good but, I think, you know, if you struggle with your financial, financial livelihood or income, God, I think God offers us all to test him with that and to join this wonderful exercise of faith. He says in the word above, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith. You know, we, we shouldn't prove God, we shouldn't tempt God, but here it's allowed, you know. Prove me now herewith, uh, says I am of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Think about that. And we, you know, uh, the Old Testament with all the laws, they are not, uh, I have not the right word, they are not uh, in charge for us anymore, but we can take that and we can, it's still, uh, God still promises that, you know. I can say about uh, tithing in decades, even when I had no own income and well, I was uh, dependent on welfare from the German uh, state and so, you know, I tried to do that and give, gave the tithe and 
even it was not the right, if I only looked uh, uh, to the calculation, you know, the human calculation with a calculator, it couldn't work, you know, because it's very, it's very uh, strict, restricted what you get on welfare and so. But uh, I always, when I got this, uh, <clears throat> this money from the government, I always said, okay, I will give uh, $60 or what, or euros, I will give that first. And then God, please take care that I have everything that I need, you know, and it always worked, you know. And God gave me uh, all, also other things that I didn't uh, expect. So I, uh, I think uh, I will encourage you that is a good area where we can really uh, experience the faithfulness of God and that our faith can work, can, can, can rise, you know. So again, I want to say something f about faith and relationship. <clears throat> You know, uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 2, as Paulus said, uh, we should always have the faith bound to love, you know. If we ex experience a love relationship with God the Father, you know, in our worship time, prayer time, uh, it is much easier to successfully uh, exercise our God-given faith because we can feel how faithful God's heart towards us. And uh, another point is uh, faith is a supernatural pheno phenomenon. We can see that very clear in Jesus' words, uh, where Jesus compares a mountain, a real mountain, not, you know, not, not a mountain of problem, but a mountain with a grain, uh, the seed of a mustard seed, you know. He compares these both and he, he just says, you know, the seed, if it's faith, it's stronger than the mountain. You know, we see at this com comparison that is uh, a supernatural thing. Even when we see that uh, the um, ancient fathers, Jacob and, and Isaac and Joseph, they, when they, um, when they blessed uh, their sons and so before they died, uh, they predicted stuff that would happen in their lives and it came always to pass. So we see uh, faith is a supernatural thing. So uh, now uh, I want to talk about uh, how to overcome doubt and unbelief. You know, we can, first of all, we can have that both at the same time. We read that in May, uh, Mark 9.24. Um, and straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, you know, it was uh, perhaps an epileptic boy and he had really uh, problems when he got these attacks and it was uh, life dangerous. And so uh, uh, Jesus said to them, um, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. And the father got under pressure and said, yeah, I, I believe, but help thou my unbelief, you know. And uh, I want to release you from some pressure, the pressure that you uh, uh, have the feeling, I had that also, uh, okay, I must, I must, do it on my own. I must produce the faith. How can I do that? I feel no faith in this thing and, and, and that regard, you know. And uh, I want to say you have the, fa the faith of Jesus Christ himself inside of you. Did you know that? The Bible says this in, uh, in some verses and I want to mention these addresses of the verses right now. If you take a pen and a paper I uh, dictate you the verse and you can look that up. We, we are not dependent on our own faith, you know. Oh, you of little faith, as Jesus uh, often rebuked the, the disciples. You know, we have also the little faith of the disciples, but that's not much, that's not good. We need another faith, but we have it. If you are born again, you have the faith of Christ on the inside of you. So if you write that down, Romans 3, verse 22, Galatians 2, verse 16, Galatians 2, verse 20, 
uh, Ephesians 3, verse 12, Philippians 3, verse 9, and Revelation 2, verse 13. Here we can see very clearly that the faith of Jesus Christ is on the inside of you as you are a born-again believer. And so you can relax a little bit and we, we just uh, now uh, have to learn how to exercise this faith, how to awake it. It has to be awakened. And uh, our unbelief limits God. We saw that before. Uh, and we also see that in if we compare uh, Mark 6, 5 and Matthew 13, 58, I repeat that, Mark 6, 5 and Matthew 13, 58, if we compare this bo uh, those both words, we can see that our faith, our unbelief limits God. We bind his hands with our unbelief. So we can, how can we get rid of unbelief? That's uh, also a thing. I think uh, we can get rid of the unbelief by fasting and prayer, you know. And uh, what about doubt? Doubt means actually that you have two possibilities, two options. In German, it's called, uh, uh, the German word uh, for doubt is Zweifel. And there, in the, the number two, which means in German, Zwei, is inside that word, Zweifel, you know. So it means you have, uh, even in the Greek, you have two possibilities, two options. Yeah, you could ask, isn't that always good to have two options? Isn't that always good to have a plan B? So does human mind think, that's normal. And uh, I think uh, in the natural uh, living, in the, your, your everyday, li everyday living, in the natural, it, it is good to have a plan B, you know, because we often cannot see the future. So we have to have another option. But when it comes to exercise our faith, uh, a plan B is not good because it's, it's doubt, you know. Uh, if you have these two possibilities, you can say the first possibility is, the first option is, God will answer your prayer request. And the second, plan B, is God will not answer your prayer. So you, uh, you waver, waver between both, back and forth. And that uh, uh, James warns us and says, a man with two souls in, in himself, uh, a man who approaches God in prayer with those two options is actually doubting God's character and will not receive anything from God. You know, uh, as I said before, God is ag ag uh, becomes ang angry and aggressive when we have doubt or unbelief. And we approach him with that. We cannot uh, make, make any, we cannot make him to give us anything. Yeah, and he says, uh, his, word, his word says clearly in Matthew 7.7, 7, Ask and it shall be given to you. You know, so I want to pray for us now. And I uh, put myself under that same problem. God, I thank you that you are uh, gracious and that you are very patient with us. And I ask you to for forgive us that we have so much unbelief in us, that we have so much doubt in us, God, forgive us that and guide us out of this misery in Jesus' name. Amen. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, ha I, ha I had a example of uh, doubt but i don't yeah mm -hmm. my brother is in charge of our little company in germany you know we have an, an engraving company in germany our family which my father uh, uh, established and he's in charge my brother his name is uwe u w e 
And, uh, you know, in this uh, situation of the cor coronavirus thing, they got a lack of uh, contracts, of course, and uh, my, they were all under big distress. And my brother said in a, in a meeting to the staff, he said, you know, either we make it to together or, or we think together. And, you know, so he, he just uh, stated these two options. Either we make it together or we, we think together. We think together. And so uh, uh, we shouldn't do that. We shouldn't think and uh, we shouldn't speak like this. He made it well, but uh, this is actually doubt, you know, two options. But we, uh, for example, we can, we should proclaim the, the promises of God instead of keeping his plan, uh, uh, instead of keeping this plan B mentality, you know. For example, Yahweh is my shepherd, I shall not want. Or uh, the other thing, beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health. Or he became a curse for us that the blessing of Abraham might come unto the Gentiles. And on and on we could go. The Bible is full of promises of success and we must use them and proclaim them instead of pasturing our fearful mind with the plan B options. You know, the third thing I want to say about that is our heart is hardened towards God because our main consideration is, is on the visible world, especially through media addiction. Did you know that watching the media and interesting movies uh, causes your brain to get into a real dopamine addiction? You know, when you see something, uh, when you see an interesting picture, your brain rewards you with a dopamine release. And if we do this repeatedly, as we all do, we get addicted because of our body's drug and so-called reward system, which watching TV or other media sets into motion. So that's why it is so attractive to watch movies, you know, your brain rewards you uh, with uh, dopamine and that's why we cannot get rid of it so so easily but we should in order to uh, exercise our faith and prepare for that we should fight against this addiction you know so as abraham also if you have a prayer request uh, for example for money or for health and so like abraham let's train to consider not, as it's seen in, uh, uh, ah, where is it here? I think it's, it's mentioned in the, in the, uh, in the uh, book of Romans, there is, it's mentioned that, uh, Abraham considered not his, the age of his body or the age of Sarah's body. He considered not the natural he considered not the, the circumstances they all that uh, all uh, screamed to him. It is not possible, you know. Yes, with God is everything possible. And I want to mention uh, two other verses: Second Corinthians three eighteen. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So change in us, in our hearts, uh, comes through beholding Jesus uh, in the scripture, you know. Second Corinthians 4, 18 says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So, we have to exercise to use our spiritual eyes instead of this natural eyes, you know. Don't look so much at the media and get out of this addiction. Addiction, that not uh, the, the program of, the TV program uh, uh, dictates your free time, you know. We should get rid of that. And uh, I say by purpose we, because I have the same problem and I am fighting against that. But addiction uh, makes our faith, uh, negates our faith. 
So the fourth, the fourth point and last point is how to exercise the faith of Christ that is already inside of you. You know, Jude verse 20 says, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Second Peter 1 Peter 1.1 says, Simon Peter, a servant of an apostle and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us. So you have the same faith that was in Peter, who let, who let the lame uh, man at the gate, the beautiful gate, stand out of his uh, wheelchair and so on, you know. Or uh, John 14, 12, as I said before, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me, on Jesus, the works that I do will he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. You know, and uh, finally in Acts uh, 11, 13, it says, For as much then God gave them the like gift as he did unto us, who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. The like gift, you know. So these words and the words that I mentioned before uh, concerning the faith of Christ clearly say we have the same spirit of faith inside of us through the... Uh, 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 when we were born again, okay? Again, I want to say that faith is a supernatural phenomenon. You cannot produce it on your own. You know, it is supernatural. It is given uh, in, in our, into our newborn spirit. But we ha just have to learn to use this supernatural weapon and equipment. Now, God wants to help us I'm sure he wants to help us through this present closed churches crisis. He wants to help us with that. How can I now find where the church is closed? And uh, I cannot go to the Sunday service. I cannot go to, to meetings during the week or so. How can I find, uh, find something that builds me up? where well, there is no meeting anymore. The answer is very simple, as I said before. Jude verse 20 says, But beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. In other words, take time to sp for speaking in tongues. You know, my wife and I love to do that on a walk through the wonderful nature. If you need further information about that, feel free to contact me on WhatsApp or uh, some, uh, contact somebody who is practicing it. My phone number on WhatsApp, USA uh, uh, nation code is uh, 001-727-220-6136. I repeat that. You can contact me on WhatsApp on 001-727-220-6136. And now I uh, want to speak about the exercising of our faith. It's much easier when you change your uh, time management and priorities and give God your personal time to encounter God and the, f the first and highest priority again, you know. Uh, we can also tithe our time if we want, you know. Spending 2.5 hours per day altogether with intimate prayer, worship, Bible reading, or seeking the Lord in an intimate manner. This would exceedingly increase your confidence while you try to exercise the faith of Christ that is inside of you. If you are his and born again, that's the condition. We must be aware that this supernatural faith doesn't work automatically. It has to be woken up instead by speaking in tongues for longer, pe longer periods, 30 to 60 minutes, for example, or unremitting continuous prayer for your re special re requests. You know, also about a longer time, 30 to 60 minutes, for example. David Yonggi Cho from Korea calls this the task prayer, and he has an entire teaching about that. 
If you want to get this task prayer teaching, please contact me, that I can send it to you. I give you my email address uh, in this regard for this uh, purpose. I spell my email address now in uh, with the international spelling alphabet. My email address is, I first say it, uh, normal Gary or Jerry 1409 at googlemail.com. I spell it now Golf Echo Romeo Romeo Yankee and then the number 140961 at Golf Oscar Oscar Golf Lima Echo Mike Alpha India Lima and dot and com. Com is uh, Caesar. Um, Otto and Massa. Uh, that's not the. <laughs> you know what com is, okay? So Luke 18, verse 8 uh, says, I tell you that he will re revenge, avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? At the end of my sermon, I would like to cite this question that uh, should concern every true Christian in our days. But when the Son of Man of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? We should take this question very serious because we as humans are not aware how deeply God is hurt into his heart if we do not believe him. Hebrews 11.6, as I said before, says, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I often, as I said before, wondered how aggressive God or Jesus responded when the disciples had, had no faith in his supernatural power, when they didn't believe. And I often said, I, I said that before, that uh, God, you have to understand that they cannot believe and we cannot believe in the same way and confidence that you could. You are the son of God. We are only weak earthen vessels. We must, un you must understand that God. But brothers and sisters, to the contrary, God has no sympathetic understanding for this. Without faith, you cannot please him in any way. So I would like to encourage you all to listen to this sermon uh, uh, again, if you need it. No, I want to say, uh, I want to encourage you all who listen to this sermon. Please learn how to exercise your God-given faith that is on the inside of you. The end time challenges that lay ahead of us all will certainly require, especially from us un, uh, born, again, uh, born again believers, that we have learned how to exercise the supernatural gift and ability of faith of Christ himself, which he imparted to us. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? So I uh, wish you that God is be with you all. And for further information, please contact us via email address as shown below this video. God bless you all. Bye.